Hello, everybody. Lynn and I were on the notorious Ruby Princess when our cruise around New Zealand was cut short and the ship ordered back to Sydney immediately. We were extremely fortunate to be able to be allowed off the ship and to a plane for Brisbane with just instructions to self-isolate for 14 days. Well, thankfully, we are well and we've passed the 14 days with no symptoms. So the question I want us to think about is how we go about praying in this current uh, pandemic, in our current plight. And perhaps we start by trying to discern what is God saying to us? What's he saying to the nation? What's he saying to the world at this time? Well, I think some things are pretty obvious. Um, the bringing down of the pride of man, as it were, and some of our rulers who believe that they can solve anything, um, maybe through politics or economics or whatever, um, this is not happening. Mary sings about this when visiting Elizabeth in part of what um, we knew as the Magnificat. Uh, it's from Luke Luke's gospel, and there's, there's a part of that where Mary says, he's brought down the rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. How tiny the microbe that has brought the world to its knees. Other things might be harder to understand in an age of grace. We live in an age of grace. That's between the cross and the Lord's return, where he holds back his judgment, the judgment day. Now, of course, many disasters are a result of our own foolishness. And it could be the source of this virus is because uh, of ruthless profiteering uh, in food markets, trading illegal animals. I know there's one theory out there that this is the cause. But how do we pray? Well, as Christians, we all have the urgent desire to pray and agonize for the Lord, begging for mercy. But what really exercises my mind is for the whole of our nation to own the need to pray for themselves and for the nation. In my devotions recently, this verse really stood out for me. It's from Psalm 79 and verse 9. Help us, God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Wouldn't it be great if the whole world owned this plea for, 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 for help. Now, for that to happen, firstly, the intercessor, the one praying, would need to believe in the power and mercy of God. Otherwise, it would just be a prayer to thin air. Secondly, our salvation, praying for being saved, is through the cross of Christ. And again, our people, uh, our nation, would need to own that too. Thirdly, the glory of God's name is sadly far from people's minds. Instead, often it's just mocked. And so I pray, deliver or save us and forgive our sins and save us from unbelief because that's the worst sin of all. In Matthew 13, Jesus did no mighty works in his hometown of Nazareth because of their unbelief. Uh, in John 3.18, unbelief brings condemnation. And in John's Gospel again, chapter 16, the Holy Spirit sent from Jesus will convict the world of sin because they do not believe in me. Unbelief leads to all the other sins, and Paul loves making lists of them. Galatians 5, Colossians 3, for example. And so I pray this prayer and ask you to join with me in it, to restore and revive your people to honor your name, Lord. Help us, O God, of our salvation. Help us for the glory of your name. Save us and forgive our sins for the honor of your name. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody.